Hi guys, Anastasia is back. Today, let's talk about step two clinical skill exam. Well, after step one, you know, it's a piece of cake, I would say. Seriously. And by the way, I really recommend you to take step two CS after your step one. First of all, that's because you are going to be so exhausted after you take your step one that you will really want to take some break, you know? So CS is not as hard as step one at all. So you <clears throat> definitely can take it after step one, but most importantly is if you take it and then start preparing for step two clinical knowledge exam, you are going to save time because you are going to be awaiting for the results of step one clinical skill exam for three months. Yes. I have no idea what they're doing there during these three months. But this is how much time they need to assess your clinical skill exam. What step two CS is about, you'll ask. Well, that's really, really entertaining exam, I would say. Damn good deal. And that's because you have to obtain the history from the patient, make a, some physical exam, and then write a patient note. And regardless whether or not you like to study with a study partner, you will have to find a study partner to prepare for this exam. And that's because you really need someone to be a patient so that you just talk to this person and get used to this format of exam. Yeah, it feels kind of awkward, you know, when you start playing. It's kind of a role that you're playing there because you are a doctor. This person, uh, the uh, patient, he's not really a patient. He's actually a person who is a playing a patient. And this person is going to give you some history. You have to obtain it. And then you have to behave as if this person is a real patient. Things that you might want to consider is the first aid book. And step two CS, first aid, is a great resource because it has some tutorial at the beginning and also information about the centers uh, where you can take the exam. And also it has uh, clinical scenarios. And you can practice those scenarios with a study partner. Also, there is a great thing from Kaplan as well. So they have a course which is five day long plus one day of simulation exam. And it's quite expensive, but during this course, they are going to teach you everything. Any kind of challenging situation that you might face during your uh, patient encounter on your exam, all these things are going to be explained explicitly during this course. Now let's talk about the exam itself. And I will tell you about the structure of the exam, then the timing and the rules that you have to follow during the, your exam day. So what you have to bring on your test day, it's a lab code, it's your stethoscope, it's a schedule and permit, and your valid ID. Now, when you arrive, you're going to be provided with a video lecture, a short tutorial about the exam day. And you're going to see other students around as well because they're going to take the same exam. There are gonna be 12 rooms and all the students during the exam session are going to be rotating to these rooms. And you're gonna be provided with a board where you can take your notes. Also, uh, once you enter the exam room, there are gonna be two proctors. Sometimes there are three proctors. Really, these proctors just see what people are doing and just make sure that people do not violate the rules. So, once the exam starts, you should uh, get prepared get inside the room, obtain your history from the patient, 
then perform your physical exam, and then leave the room and make your patient notes. And uh, you are going to be rotating to five rooms, and then you're going to be provided with a break and with a lunch. Uh, then you're going to have four encounters more, then you will have a break, and then you will wrap up with three more encounters, and then your day is going to be over. Now, timing. So you're going to have 15 minutes for each patient encounter, and that includes obtaining the history, then performing your physical exam, and then also counseling the patient. And there is an announcement that's going to tell you that you can start your patient encounter before each uh, case starts. Then, once you're inside the room, you're going to hear another announcement, which will say that your encounter is finished in five minutes. And then the last in, uh, announcement, which you are going to hear inside the patient room, is going to tell you that your encounter is over and you should now leave the room. You should not wait until the proctor comes in and grabs you and takes you out to the corridor because this is considered to be a violation of the rules. I want to stay! I like it here! Once you go out from the room, you can never come back. Then you start typing your patient notes and it, you have 10 minutes to complete your patient notes and you're going to hear another announcement just two minutes before you should uh, finish your patient note. Uh, about the irregular behavior. So you cannot ask other students about their patients during the break times. Don't ever do that. And this is strictly prohibited. In fact, the proctors can hear that you're talking about that and just withdraw you from the examination session. You cannot violate the room in terms of timing. Once the announcement says your patient encounter is over, you must leave the room. And then after the announcement says that your patient note is finished, you must stop typing. In fact, when I was during my exam, I would actually put my hands just above my head so everyone sees that I stopped typing. And uh, just don't panic, you know? There are going to be other students and you have no idea what they're going to be doing. During my exam, one person was withdrawn from the exam uh, session and I got so scared because this person was just next to me and, but my timing is going on, right? So I just said to myself, okay, just relax. Everything is fine, continue typing. And I finished my encounter and that was fine. But just don't panic because you are in charge of yourself. Now let me tell you about the parts that are going to be assessed on your result report. So there are three parts mainly. One of which is integrated clinical encounter. The other one is communicational and interpersonal skills. And the last one is spoken English proficiency. So you are going to be assessed on each category and you should pass each of those categories or parts in order to pass the whole exam. So integrated clinical encounter is basically the assessment of your medical knowledge, which is going to be uh, assessed uh, according to your patient notes. Now, the Communicational and interpersonal skills, as well as spoken English proficiency, are going to be assessed by the patients during your exam session. Your results are going to be available within three months. So you should actually start preparing for your next step. And just do not worry about your result because it's just so long that you cannot be anxious during three months. You should not be. You just let it go and then get your result and you're going to pass it because this exam is really about the practice. The more you practice, the higher chance you're going to have to pass this exam. And about the spoken English proficiency right now, I will 
say something to the international medical graduates. Uh, you know, our level of English is different, really, and uh, we do not have a perfect accent, but we should make sure that the patients uh, can actually communicate with us and can understand us. Because if the patient does not understand you, you're not going to get a credit for that. Kim Bassinger? Ba Basinger? Ba Basinger? If your English cannot be improved for some reason, you the best way actually to master your spoken English proficiency is just memorize the phrases. And they're pretty generic that you're going to say to the patient and questions that you're going to ask the patient. That's the best way to make sure that a patient is going to understand you and then get a credit for your spoken English proficiency. Guys, now let's talk about scheduling our exam. So make sure that you schedule your exam very early. Like, I mean, once you get your scheduling permit, go and schedule your exam. And that's because you really want to make sure that you reserve a spot. Since all the spots are filling up very, very fast, and you can actually go online and see that the next available uh, date is in three or four months, and this might be very late for you already. So regardless whether or not you feel you are prepared, right now, go and schedule your exam right now. And uh, you can... Uh, download something, you know, like a software. There are a lot of them online that are going to inform you once someone canceled uh, his or her date, you can actually schedule your exam on that day. So something that I used for myself was check for change. Uh, and you can uh, schedule your exam in a few centers in the U.S., so they're located in Houston, in Atlanta, in Chicago, in Los Angeles, and there are two centers in Philadelphia. How does it feel to take step two clinical skill exam? Well, I enjoyed my experience because I really like talking to people and most of the patients are kind and uh, they're willing to help you. Yes, there was some... Uh, challenging patients. In fact, there are some patients who are going to be angry or who are going to be upset or depressed or silent and you have to know how to manage those patients. But mostly patients are going to be fine and they're going to be very friendly. So just keep calm and, and show to the patients that you're comfortable because the more comfortable you feel, the better they will actually assess your communication skills and the better your spoken proficiency is going to be. Because when you are relaxed, your speech is smooth, right? You don't think about the words and uh, patients will understand you much e more easily. And also, I understand this is really depends on personality. You know, uh, if you don't like to talk much to people or, you know, for some reason you feel awkward, you will get much more comfortable uh, during the exam because first you're going to feel tense, but after you figure out how things work, you're going to get, you know, uh, relaxed and then you're going to meet other people during the break times. The lunch is good. So I really suggest you to have a good sleep the night before the exam and then just relax. So good luck and as usual, subscribe to Parseed and see you next time because next time I'm talking about step two clinical knowledge exam and how to prepare and schedule this exam. <music> Guys, thank you so much for watching me. Please subscribe to my video blog on Parsee. 